Oh, hi. Hi, I didn't see you there. Hi. Wow. How long were you there? Were you watching me? Oh my, that's okay. I was just trying to adjust everything and trying to get a few things ready. But I'm so glad you're here because today we are going to do this beautiful painting and I have so many other paintings that I want to teach you. So I'm going to get started on this. So come on over and uh, gather your paints, your brushes, and let's go and start painting. All right. See you soon. Okay, today we are going to start off with 11 by 14 canvas. Already primed when you buy and it at the store. It's pre-primed. And today I'm using Liquid X Basics. And I have Pantanium White, Cad Yellow, Cad Red, Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Sienna, and Sap Green. Now I always use these colors because once you get the colors that you want, then you have them. You don't have to go searching for uh, many different types of colors. So these colors are what I always use. I always have my primary colors on first red, yellow, and blue, and I always add a bit of brown and some green, and of course black and white to lighten and darken. So that's all you really need. You have a nice limited palette, and then you don't have to worry about Painting anything else. Here's a bristle brush, nice stiff bristles. And I have a synthetic brush for the sky, and I have another synthetic brush. You may use this for the fence. And I have a small round brush for flowers and that's the brushes we'll use today. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make a really nice light sky. So I'm just going to take my ultramarine blue and I'm going to mix it with my titanium white. See how nice and bright it is? Nice and bright. The brighter the better. That's a nice color there. So I'll just put that on. And we leave some holes for clouds. I like doing it that way sometimes because it helps people who have a hard time with clouds be able to actually make clouds so much easier. As you will see. So, just leave open some holes. I've done some other bit of videos like this and I have a lot of videos on clouds different ways you can make clouds. You can make them even without brushes if you want. So here we go. See? Just scrub it on. Scrub it on and have some fun. You don't have to do the back and forth that I normally do. But look, already you can see clouds. And now you can take your brush and dip it into only white. It's okay if it's dirty. Got lots of paint on there. And I'm going to start putting in some circles where I left open the the holes there. See, because the paint is still wet, that will blend nicely. I'm just going to round with some circles. There we go. Circles give you nice fluffy clouds. We'll be adding more white to that now in a second. How pretty they are already. Now, these might look, this sky actually may look different than the picture, but that's okay. I want to teach you that you do not have to go buy a reference photo. Just use it as a reference to know there's a sky and where the sky goes and it has clouds and what color the sky is. And the different things that you're painting in that reference photo, but don't have to be exactly the same colors. Don't have to be exactly the same shape clouds. There we go. See, that looks nice. Now you can add some extra ones by adding white. There we go. Once you get your white on, just move away, move away. Good. So we get our white again. I'm just putting it on. I'm going to put on the corner of my brush. And I'm going to make these little circles on what I already did. And once you get that nice white fluffy cloud on top, just move away. Don't, don't go back over it. There we go. That makes it nice and bright. You can also wait for that paint to dry if you like and then put the white on top of what you just did. As long as you don't go over that nice white section that you put on there. You can even tap on some clouds. 
see? Beautiful. Beautiful. Look at that. Just tap on. See, your shadows are already there. And all you're doing is tapping out some highlights. There we go. So I'm going to let the rest of that dry and then I'll add more after. I do find making circles nice and I find it makes it nice and soft and fluffy. Tapping it on gives it more texture. But you don't really want a lot of texture in your clouds. So I'll let that dry and then we'll continue on. And uh, you put as many clouds in as you want. And sky always has a lighter edge to it down here at the bottom as it gets down further. So it's darker on top and lighter at the bottom. So we'll just put a little bit of white down here just to brighten it up a little bit. See, that's what that tape is there for, see? That'll help you get a nice horizon line, even though we may end up losing that horizon line. Okay. Take off the tape. There we go. Oh, came down a little bit. See that? That don't always happen, but sometimes it do. But because we're putting grass down here, we don't have to worry about it too much. But I still wanted to put the tape on just so I have an idea where I want it to end my sky. So let's take our bristle brush and put it in water and wipe off the excess water and tap it into your hand so you can spread open those bristles, okay? So you want to do some tapping, some nice hard tapping. So I'm going to take some of my sap cream and I'm going to darken it with some blue. So I want a really dark and a little bit of red. I want to start off my grass with a really dark green, okay? I'm going to do that down here. It's really nice and dark. Isn't that nice? Look how nice and dark that is. Go right across, straight across. Nice. Pick up some more greens and reds, blue. Keep it nice and dark. I know a lot of this will probably be covered up by the time we get our bike and fence on there, but this is a good learning process for you in case you don't put anything on top of your grass. Okay, so always look at it as a learning process, no matter if we cover things up after we do it or not. It's, it's like a practice. See, all that texture. You wouldn't get that texture if you were just using a regular flat chisel, uh, yeah, chisel edge brush, synthetic brush. You wouldn't get that. See, that's nice, isn't it? Now, take this here and then add green to it and a little bit of yellow. Brighten up somewhat. See? And then we will put that up here. And you tap the two of them together so that you still got your dark, but you're putting this lighter green on top. So as you come up, we're going to get lighter and lighter. All right. You can also add a little bit of red to that if you want, just to give it some different colors. See how dark it gets when you add your red, so we can add a bit more yellow. Look at those nice colors we're getting, though. Look pretty. Good. Nice. See, it's just tap, 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 tap. Now we're going to go lighter again. So I'm going to add yellow. See how brightening it up nice and light? I might even add a little bit of white. Okay. I might add a little bit of red here and there. Still a bit dark, so I'm going to brighten that up now. Add more yellow. 
keep working on it until you get the color you're looking for but look how nice that's coming out so I'm trying to make sure that this is all looks like it's, it's transitioning from dark to light that it's not um, a line here and a line there you know so you want to make sure it transitions and you just tap it into each other all right more yellow good getting lighter and lighter nice grass now let's make it really light I'm going to clean off my brush get some of that dark off my br off my brush I'm going to clean off my brush so some of that dark off my brush and I'm going to go into my sap green separated from what I just did because I got too much dark in there and I'm going to lighten it up like this see it's much brighter isn't it because all that down there has too much dark in it and I can't get it light enough now look at this see not pretty look at that nice more yellow into your green nice that nice texture I'm just tapping into my yellow and tapping into my green this brush see these bristle brushes this is the texture you get with these all you do is tap 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 and you get this fantastic texture grass foliage trees this what we're doing here now is great for trees and bushes and flowers right see so you can see I want to add a little bit of red so I can make some color in there I'm still going down here you can see I went down but I didn't go all the way down because I want to Keep my dark. A bit of red just to give it some color. More yellow. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Just gonna tap over some stuff here. I want to get some extra yellow, so I'm just adding only yellow this time just to brighten up some areas. See, you can play around with it. You don't have to do anything. There's no real rules. Just do whatever you think will work for you. As long as you know the basic technique and what brushes to use. So this brush, bristle brush, any size that you're comfortable with, depending on what you're working on. Your tap, tap, tap. And that's about it. But look how pretty that is. Isn't that nice? Now we let that dry and then we will start with our next part of the painting which is the fence so you keep coming forward so this is behind the fence and the bike and the flowers so what's next next is the fence because the fence is now going to be behind the bike and the flowers okay and then you're going to add the bike and then because the bike is in front of the fence and then you have flowers on top of the fence you can add them next and the little bird and then when it's all finished you can add more flowers down under the bike so that's the different stages in making a painting like a lot of people don't know the stages or don't know where to start but that's that's a good idea of where you, this is a good this is a good painting to show you the different stages of your painting and how to achieve getting everything in place without having to go all over the place because you don't want to put your bike on now and try and put the fence uh, you know in between your bike it would be really really hard so that's the beauty with our acrylics if this was oils you may have to work in a different way because the oils do not dry so we need to dry all this in order to put the rest of the painting together now we have this rickety old fence in the back okay so we'll do that next so now we will add our fence and I'm going to use my bigger, the biggest brush you can find. So now we're going to add our fence and I'm going to use the flat brush number six. Now depends on the size of your canvas and how wide you want your fence. So I'm just going to use this one here. So you judge it accordingly and I'm going to get it started. So we'll decide where we want our fence and I'm going to have one right here on the very edge 
of my canvas you can decide yourself where you want or how you want your fence okay it's just an idea so I'm just going to put my white paint on here and I'm going to come up to about here I want to go up over the grass so that it's just past the grass there and I'm going to pull straight down with my flat brush and that'll give me kind of a straight edge on the edge there I don't really want it to be perfect because I want it to be kind of old looking and so if you want to you can judge where the space by the same width of the brush so you can make a note of the brush right here so we can start over here because that's the same width and then you come down now I ran out of paint that's okay okay so that's the good thing about this doing this because you don't have to be too careful because now you want your fence post to be kind of you know old and rickety and so fill up your brush again I put lots of paint on it because so judge it there there it is there it's probably around here okay so you just measure it and space it And the edge of your brush will give you that nice sharp edge there. We don't want to be perfect. So you don't have to worry. And this is one good thing about it is that sometimes you're doing a painting, you're trying to get everything perfect and straight lines. So I'm going to measure that there and it comes over to about here. And down. And up. See how that's crooked over there? You can fix that. Yeah, like that. Let me see if I need to fix this. I don't want to... Sometimes you can just pull your brush down on the edge here. Good. Now when we fill that in with our darks, that look much better again. Now, if you didn't get it opaque enough, just give it a second coat. And you can probably turn your brush this way so that you can get it where you want it. There we go. Different ways you can do things. You could go back over it like that again, but you'll probably end up having put more paint on this way I think you can fill in the spots that need it I'm going to get a smaller flat brush and I'm going to put those parts in here let's see let's see where we put that up here um, hmm I'd like to see that grass there I think I'm just going to put it here Pull over. Try to get those straight edges. Small flat brush again to put our darks on here so we can make it look like. I'm going to add black and I might add a little bit of blue to it. Black and blue. Oh, so I'm be. So black and blue, I don't know, I just, you can use just black if you want. And I'm going to add that on here just to give it that old look. So I'm using the chiseled edge of my brush. I'm just going to add some at the top first. And then, I might add a little crack here. A crack right there. And then I'm just going to scrape on a few others. Now if you do this and you get too much or you don't like it, just go back and add some more white.
Now we'll just add a little more darks and a little more lights. All right, so I'm just going to take my flat brush and use this one. Chiseled edge, very important. So I'm going to take my black and I'm going to get a few more creases, cracks. I call them creases. But anyway, see, that's better. Look. See? So I'm just going to follow the ones I already have there. I like the way that opened up there. Do you see that? Let's see if we can do something here with this one. I think the more you play around with it, the more rough it looks. And, oh no, it's really nice. It's fun. I like it. So let's go into the shadow parts here. So if the sun is coming in from the right, I, that's why I got some highlight on the edge here. There'd be more shadow than inside here, wouldn't it? So we'll use that shadow. I'll put a little one right here just to separate that from there and then we'll pull it over. See that? Isn't that cool? So we'll go with black here, pull it over, add a little bit here just to separate the, give it a better realism. That's how you make things look more realistic. All these little details, all these shadows and highlights, what really makes things stand out more because they're not flat. Because you're only working on a flat canvas, right? So you got to add shadows and highlights to make them round, to make them, give them a better shape. See? You just pull over, and then what's left over, put it on the edge here. Leave some white showing through. Right. See? That looks pretty good. That's what I wanted. And thank you so much for dropping by. And I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.